Hi everyone. In this video, I will demonstrate how you can determine the equation of a sinusoidal function given its graph. For this example, I will first aim to write the equation as a transformation of y equals sine x. Then I can write the equation as a transformation of y equals cosine x. So here I have a graph in blue that is uh, some transformation of the function y equals sine x. What we want to do is to figure out the a, b, c, and d values for this particular graph. Once we have those, we pop them into this equation and we're done. So to figure out the a value, we can do this uh, a couple different ways. We've got the graph in front of us. The a we know is really just the amplitude. So the amplitude would be half the height of the graph. So the height extends from negative three all the way to one. So the total height would be one, two, three, four units. Half of that would be then two. So a equals two. So I'm gonna write it like this, amplitude equals two. Okay, then um, to figure out the b value, uh, remember b is not the period. So what we actually have to do is figure out the period and then put it into this formula. Uh, the b value, uh, I'll just write b value, otherwise it will think I'm trying to do something with the graph. b value equals 2 times pi divided by the period. Okay, so working with this graph, analyzing this graph, we can see um, that there is a cycle from maximum to maximum. Okay, so one way that you can determine the period, which is the width of this cycle, is to count the number of squares from maximum to maximum. So I've got 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16 squares. Okay, uh, 16 of these little uh, grid increments. So I can see that f every four squares is pi over six. So that means four, eight, 12, 16 takes me to two pi over three, which means that must be the period. Okay, so then over here for the B value, I end up with two pi divided by uh, two pi over three. Okay, and so that leaves me with a B value of three. Okay, I'll make that a little bit wider so we can see that. All right, I'm gonna skip the C value for now. Uh, save the best for last, right? Uh, the D value, the D value is simply the median. Now the median is really that line, that horizontal line that splits the sinusoidal graph into an upper half and a lower half. You can pretty much eyeball it here, right? Like it looks like it's around negative one. Right, um, you're not always going to be able to eyeball it because a, um, the numbers aren't going to be so small, like one and negative three. So if you if you can't eyeball it or you want to actually check to see if it's correct, you can use this formula here. So I'm going to go max over two first of all, but it's really max plus min over two. Right, when you add two numbers and divide by two, you're really looking for the uh, average, and I think that just disappeared. So I'll write median. Okay, so the median is really the max plus the min divided by two. So in this case, we've got uh, one is the max plus negative three is the min. And then if we divide that by two, we end up with negative one. Okay, so in a uh, sort of a written response question, this is how you would, this is how you would write it. Okay, and I'm gradually running out of, out of space here as I, uh, as I type this in. So I think, yeah, I'll just leave it like that. Okay, and finally, we do need to figure out the C value. Now, okay, remember this is D. So, uh, you know, I probably should have written it this way, D value, okay? Not that we're devaluing it, haha, <laughs> bad joke. Okay, so there's negative one. Uh, and then the C value. Okay, so what could the C value be? Well, the C value, remember, I'm just gonna do this because I need a little bit more space. The C value for a sine function depends on where that median is. So the first thing I'm gonna do when I'm given a graph is go ahead and take a pen or marker or some colored uh, pen and, and draw in the median, okay? So the median would be uh, y is equal to negative one, okay? So that's a nice bright green. And in, in the case of a sine function, you're gonna look along this median for that start point. Okay, I'm gonna remind you what sine x looks like. Okay, so sine x has an amplitude of one. And remember the start point that we uh, I have identified for sine x 
is this point where the median intersects with the y-axis or where the curve of sine x is rising up through the median. Okay, so now if we look at the blue graph, okay, we want to look for a point that is on this green median but is also on the part of the sine function that is rising up. So not this one, because this one's going down, but this one over here is rising up. So it looks like it's at 5 pi over 12. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, we also have one over here that's a little bit closer. This is also a point that is on the median and is rising up on the curve, and that looks like it's at negative pi over 4. Okay, so we can pick either one, but negative pi over 4 is closer, so I'll just go with that one. So the c value is negative pi over 4. Okay, and I'm going to write it like this, c value equals that. Okay, and now that I've got all of that, uh, I can write down the equation of the sine function, which is y is equal to uh, amplitude 2. Um, sine uh, b, which is the b value which we have identified as 3, um, and I'll just verify that. Okay, so the sine of 3 is the b value x. Uh, the c value is negative pi over 4, so that would be minus negative pi over 4, aka plus pi over 4. Okay, and then we're going to add the d value, which in this case is negative 1. So I've put negative 1 there. You'll notice that by putting the negative 1 there, I've got the correct equation because it graphs right on top of the blue one. Okay, now um, that, that took a few steps to be able to figure out all of the parameters to come up with a sine function. To figure out what the, the equation of the blue graph is as a cosine function doesn't take uh, that much time now that we can piggyback off of the work that we've done. The fact of the matter is, is the blue graph, uh, regardless of whether we express it as a sine function or a cosine function, still has the same amplitude, still has the same period, and still has the same median. The only difference that we would encounter is in, in the c value, right? So the c value, if we were to describe this as a sine function or the transformation of y equals sine x, would be negative pi over 4. The c value, if it's a cosine function, does not rely on us looking along the median but it relies on us looking at the maximum values. The closest maximum value to the y-axis is right here. And if I zoom in a bit, we can see that it is two squares to the left of the y-axis. Now, four squares is pi over six. So two squares is going to be pi over 12. So negative pi over 12 would be the c value if we were to look at this as a cosine function. So this point right here, used to be on the y-axis and it got shifted to the left by pi over 12 radians. So if we were to write this, let's see if it actually graphs on top of this. As a cosine function it would be y equals 2 cos 3, right? 2 is still the same, same amplitude, 3 is still the same, same period. Uh, not that 3 is the period, but 3 influences the period. x, now the shift was to the left so again, it'd be x minus pi over 12, so plus pi over 12. Uh, whoops. And then minus 1. Okay, And just like that, we end up with the same graph, except now written as a cosine equation.